Hey y'all, welcome back to the Farmer's Table. My name is Jess. If you are new here, I'm so glad that you're here. And if you are not new here, I am also glad that you're here. We're doing a cook with me kitchen vloggy kind of day. I wanted to kind of give you guys some context to some videos that are going to be coming up. Um, but I've got to go harvest something out of my high tunnel for us to cook in the kitchen today And I'm gonna take you guys with me now. I do a lot of like farm vlogging on my other channel roots and refuge uh, I created this channel to really like keep it centric to the kitchen But I like giving peeps occasionally of what's going on out there because that's where a lot of our food comes from If you only are here from this channel, you might not have met bear yet. Hello bear bear comes with me on the farm I think I need a larger basket. Isn't it cool that on this channel in six months, we are going to be making tons of different recipes and delicious foods from all these tiny little baby plants that are just starting their life in here right now? I think that's cool. Like people? The guinea. Oh, you mean like in the garden? Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably a little bit, but not as much as chickens. Mm. I should have let this go. Hold on, I need to let it go one more. Alright, we had to open up the high tunnel walls because we're balancing between cold nights and warm days. And with that, I, the reason I needed to come out and pick stuff is that I've got a bunch of like heads of cauliflower and broccoli that are going to seed. I'll refrain from doing a ton of gardening explanations on this channel because I've got another channel for that. But I've got a lot of these, like this is a Romanesco cauliflower and some broccolis and stuff. And as you can see, like they're starting to get loose because they're going to open up into flowers. And I've been plugging away at like cooking this for dinners and roasting it and stuff like that. But I just can't get through it fast enough, so I need to pick it all at once and preserve it. So one thing that I will do whenever I've got brassicas like this, cauliflower, broccoli, um, namely, I will pick them together and pickle them and do just like a pickled mix. They'll last for a really long time that way in the fridge. And it allows me to put up a bunch of food all at once. Look at that pretty little guy. That's so neat looking. This is a quite imperfect Romanesco cauliflower. It has it has a few little buggies in it. So I'm gonna soak this in salt water when I get inside the house. When you are gonna start eating real food, especially if you're gonna grow it yourself or source it from local farms, you may come across a bug or two, which can be really alarming when you've only ever bought your food at the grocery store uh, but I've I've learned to really embrace that and appreciate the fact that real food comes dirty and sometimes it has bugs on it and the fact that the bugs want to eat it is reassuring to me because you know <laughs> perfect food that's all completely uniform and it's been sprayed with a lot of chemicals and poisons that would make bugs not want to eat it I have decided makes me not want to eat it too so I'll take my real food and just wash the bugs off. I feel like some carrots would go well with my pickled cauliflowers and broccolis. You can pickle most veggies. Oh, look at that pretty little guy. These are maybe a little on the smaller side. Oh, that's big though. That's nice, little bundle, throw it in here. It's a good thing I grabbed a larger basket. All right, here we have it, our lovely little harvest. I am gonna go ahead and get a salt water soak together because there were some little buggies on this. If you harvest anything from your garden that has a lot of nooks and crannies and you're concerned about bugs, um, or if you purchase from the farmer's market either, even if, especially if you're buying from an organic grower, um, insects are always a possibility with that. And it's a very simple solution. Um, you just soak them in some salt water and that will cause any insects that are hiding away to release and float to the top. So this actually serves a dual purpose, soaking your veggies. Um, if you have anything like fresh from the garden or from the farmer's market, if it gets rubbery, you, you, just, you can soak it. it gives you the best shelf life or fridge life 
when you bring in fresh harvest to go ahead and soak it in water so that it can completely rehydrate especially if you harvested during like the heat of the day it's just a good practice to be in and you can do the salt water soak which does the dual purpose of getting bugs out now i don't bother with the salt when i'm soaking things like cucumbers or um i'll soak zucchinis i'll soak carrots and if it's not something that i'm concerned that there may be bugs hiding i don't put any salt i just do cool water but i soak most veggies like that uh, for at least 15 minutes when i bring them in especially if i'm planning on just putting them in the fridge if i'm going to go ahead and process them right away it doesn't matter and on fruits like tomatoes or melons it doesn't really matter but anything that has a tendency to get a little rubbery it just needs to be rehydrated so i'm putting a couple of tablespoons of salt in this bowl and i'm gonna go ahead i've got my kettle on and i'm just gonna put a splash of hot water in the bottom to melt the salt and i'm gonna give this a second swirling it around so it can get nice and melted okay now that the salt is melted I'm putting cold water in this um obviously i wouldn't want to soak my vegetables in boiling water out of the kettle because that would cook them uh that was simply just enough to melt the salt i'll fill this bowl up about halfway just enough that i could submerge my veggies in this cool salty water now i harvested a whole bunch of like little florets that i cut off of the plants and with these i'm not bothering soaking them i'm about to process them right now like if i was going to roast these for dinner tonight i might go ahead and stick them in some water so they could rehydrate still be crisp tonight um and then just let them soak put them in the fridge until dinner seeing as how i'm going ahead and pickling these today i'm not concerned about that and i can just visually inspect these and see that they don't have any passengers however these I'm going to go ahead and soak because I can actually see that they do have passengers. And for the sake of the best texture, I'm going to go ahead and put these carrots in here too. There we go. And while this soaks, since the kettle's hot, I might as well make a cup of tea, don't you think? Nothing like something warm in a lovely mug on a kitchen work day. So I pulled my carrots out of the soak. I scrubbed them real good. I broke the little spindly tips off. I typically don't peel carrots for much of anything and today I'm pickling them I just scrubbed them really good to make sure that there's no visible soil on them the only exception for that for me is if I'm fermenting I will go ahead and peel them uh, just because with fermentation you're actually culturing bacteria whereas with pickling it's gonna have salt and vinegar and I'm not worried about that if there's soil on these carrots it being a problem there's not any that i can see but for the sake of fermentation i like to get everything as absolutely clean as possible and then with these um i'll just take them rinse and break the florets and i will go ahead and just take a look at them as i do that just to make sure that i'm not pickling uh, any cabbage worms So for these carrots, I just want bite-sized pieces. My goal with this pickled mix is gonna be this kind of spicy, oniony, garlicky veggies that are pickled that you can take a scoop of and eat it kind of like a salad on the side of something. It goes great with really anything. I mean, I will a lot of times just, you know, stand in the refrigerator and just <laughs> eat it from the open jar, but it can be put on a plate of tacos or with a burger or with any sort of roasted meats. It'd be really great. Um, I am going to save these carrot tops. Um, I'll put these in a bag in the freezer. And the next time I get enough little scraps saved up, these will be veggie broth. Now, I would really prefer to put a purple onion in this because I love pickled purple onions. I just think they have the perfect balance of bite. Um and tanginess however i don't have any so i'm doing this big sweet onion it's just what i have it'll still be very good and i'm going to take two whole heads of garlic i like a really garlicky uh pickled mix you don't have to put any garlic in at all if you don't want to i i try to keep in mind whenever i'm cutting things up for something like this just how i want to eat it so if you do not like big old hunks of pickled garlic dice small dice mints um i like a big hunk of pickled garlic 
I eat garlic like vampires are a real threat. And so I, um, I like to just cut the cloves in half uh, because I don't mind. I leave them whole, but I find that they pickle a little better and become, the, the flavors meld better if you cut them in half, at least my, my opinion. So with cutting these onions, I do want kind of thin slices uh, so that my rings are nice thin pieces just like this and I'm just keeping these things separate like I have my broccoli and cauliflower here carrots onions because I'm gonna layer these into the jar to make sure that it's well dispersed all right I've got everything cut up I've got a pot here I'm gonna go ahead and get my brine going because you need to be able to let it cool off a little bit um, it doesn't really matter if you pour it hot over your veggies as there, other than the fact that pouring like very hot liquid into cool or room temperature veggies in a cool jar, it can have thermal shock and break. So I like to start the brine and at least let it come down so it's not boiling. The simple ratio for like quick pickles that you're just going to put in the fridge is you want a cup of vinegar to a cup of water to a tablespoon of salt and if you like a little sweet and with your pickles, you can do a tablespoon of sugar also. And, that, and you can scale that. So if you wanted to do like a pint of pickled veggie, you would cut that in half um, and do like a half a cup of vinegar to a half a cup of water and then a half a tablespoon of salt. Um, and then you can go all the way up. Like I'm doing a gallon of pickled veggies today. And of course the veggies are gonna take up a lot of the space in the jars. So I'm just gonna do, I'll probably do like three cups of vinegar, three cups of water, three tablespoons of salt, and hopefully that's enough brine. So I'm doing apple cider vinegar here. Uh, I just like the flavor that it lands. You can do white vinegar. Now, technically for any sort of pickling, since this is a preservation, now it is gonna stay in the refrigerator, uh, but you do wanna use 5% vinegar. So I've done apple scrap vinegars and like homemade vinegars and stuff like that. Obviously, this comes down to choice and like your comfort level, but the official guideline is that if you're doing any sort of pickling for preservation purposes that you need to use 5%. I like apple cider vinegar because of the richness. Now, you can make apple scrap vinegar at home, which is where you take like peels and cores and stuff like that and ferment that into a vinegar, but it is a different flavor than apple cider vinegar, which is actually made from like pressed apple cider. Now, here's three cups water. This is over medium high heat. I just want to make it come to like a, a mild boil just to melt my salt and let all the flavors melt. Now this is optional. You can pack your garlic and then any herbs you want to add. I really like thyme in this, bay leaves. Any sort of like hot peppers is good in this. I don't have any growing right now, obviously. Um, cucumbers is really good to add. It just depends on what's coming in in the garden. All right, okay, three tablespoons of salt. And I actually do like a little sugar in this. So I'm just gonna put a couple tablespoons of sugar in. And you don't have to, but I usually do go ahead and add my garlic to the brine. It is gonna quickly boil that garlic, which will soften it a little bit. I just feel like that kind of fast tracks the garlic flavor permeating everything else. You can also, if you want, like pack your herbs into the jars if you don't want to put them in the brine. Uh, what I do next is I'm going to layer in all the stuff that I'm pickling. This is, as I said, a fairly simple mix that I'm doing today, um, really just for the sake of using this cauliflower and stuff. But I have done these where they're very extensive and I have a lot of things in it. I wish there was more overlap in the time of the garden where the brassicas were growing with peppers and stuff because I usually do not have those growing at the same time because this is really good with like some spicy peppers in it. So the more I think about this as I put this together, I just feel like I'm gonna be really bummed if this doesn't have a kick to it. And since I don't have any peppers growing in the garden, I do have these dried pasilla peppers. And these are not super spicy. They're kind of comparable to like a mild jalapeno, but I'm gonna wiggle these down in here and go ahead just so that I've got a little kick of heat. Would have been ideal to put this in before packing the jar. Obviously I could take this all apart, but Where's the challenge in that, really? All right, there it is in there. 
Also just stuck some bay leaves in here. I didn't think I had any, but then I found where they had gotten stuck in the pantry. So you don't necessarily need to like pack everything down in here, but you do want to make sure it's not super loose because if it is super loose when you put the brine in, it's going to take a lot more brine. And then also everything's just going to start floating and then there's space for all the little bits to float up to the top. So do make sure your jar is relatively full, even if you have to size down to a smaller jar. Isn't that so pretty? Colorful food. Sands bugs. So here's my brine, which has the garlic and some dried herbs in it. It just boiled, I turned it off, and now I'm just gonna let it cool off enough that I can pour it over my veggies. All right, it has been long enough that this is still quite warm, but it's not gonna break a jar. I am gonna try to make sure that I get some of the garlic in here. I might have to press it down. So with fridge pickles, or quick pickles, you often hear them called, uh, you're, you're going to want to let them sit for ideally two weeks before you break in them to eat them in the refrigerator. You can do it. You can eat them as soon as like 72 hours, but they're not going to be nearly as pickly tasting at that point. The longer you give them, obviously, the more they're able to, the flavors can marry. Now, this afternoon, I am working on a couple of quick videos. I've decided, I've been making a list, and I would love your input on this. Um, I'm making a list of very quick reference videos I can make. Like I wanna do like the best runny yolk egg and you know, how to make mayonnaise. Like things that don't necessarily warrant a longer video, just something that can be five minutes or less, a real quick instruction. I hesitate to do it in the format of shorts in under a minute. <laughs> the other day someone commented and that well a few people did on my vanilla video which is like 15 minutes long and it kind of trended it got a lot of views anyway so a lot of new people saw it someone was like you sure are long-winded I was like you have no idea <laughs> you have no idea I really didn't pack this it's pretty loose I should have made more brine so you can't tell because time I actually added some more, I added two more cups of vinegar, two more cups of water, two more tablespoons of um, salt on this and heated it back up and let it cool back down. So there was a little bit of a, a lapse there um, because just this broccoli and cauliflower is kind of loose. And with that being the case, it's, it's just not packed in super, super densely. And this was taking more brine than I anticipated but I would love to know if you have anything like that that you would like to know if you need like a quick reference I'm thinking I would like to just have a catalog of videos so that when I do like cook with me where I'm doing dinners and I'm using lots of different things you can easily find the fast reference to be able to go watch it without having to weed through like a 30 minute video to find simple quick tutorial type instructions with this very cutting it very fine the brine's not quite over the top i'm just going to add a little a splash more of vinegar just to make sure that everything is covered and from here i am going to put lids on top this is still quite warm so i'm going to leave it on the counter um, until it cools off enough to put in the fridge i'm going to stick it in the back of the fridge and do my best to forget about it for about two weeks shake all the bubbles up isn't that pretty well y'all there is some true farm to fork food. It's almost to the fork. It's not quite there yet. But this was growing in the high tunnel, uh, I don't know, what, an hour or so ago. And now it is ready to go in the fridge. This lasts for months and months in the fridge uh, because it is obviously, it's packed in salty vinegar water. So there's a lot of preservation going on in that. And then of course the refrigerator itself. Now it will not last months and months because we will eat this up because it's delicious. What do you like to put in your quick pickles? You can do this for all sorts of things. You can just make regular like cucumber pickles if that's what you're used to with this ratio and then you can add dill and garlic and all the different things you will see me do this multiple times throughout the season of course it's a little different process whenever you're canning but it's still fairly simple however for things that i know we're going to eat a whole lot of doing quick fridge pickles is my favorite way to do it because you still you maintain more bite um, because these veggies aren't cooked because I'm not processing them through a canner so i like the crunchiness with the brightness of 
pickled veggies this way. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate your feedback on what I was asking about for quick tutorials. I bless you. Until next time.